Welcome to Electron Line. Before we can show you the curl and the divergence with cylindrical coordinates, we need to review the cylindrical coordinates. So let's go ahead and do that. So notice that in the XYZ plane, when we use Cartesian coordinates, we can represent a point in space by evaluating the X value, the Y value, and the Z value of that particular component, or the X, Y, and Z coordinates. We can also draw a vector from the origin to that point, and we can have the position vector explained in terms of X in the I direction, plus Y in the J direction, plus Z in the K direction. But what happens when we try to convert that to cylindrical coordinates? In cylindrical coordinates, a point in space is defined by the distance along the xy plane, or in the same direction as the xy plane, from the z-axis to that point, we call that rho. Then we have an angle that is measured from the positive x-axis to that position, so we have the distance from the z-axis to the point, then we have the angle phi, and then we have the height from the xy plane to the point. So in cylindrical coordinates, we use rho, phi, and z as the coordinates of that particular point. Now, of course, in the Cartesian coordinate system, we have unit vectors i, j, and k, which are one unit long, and point in the direction of the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. Well, what are the unit vectors in cylindrical coordinates? Well, the first one is the unit vector in the rho direction. So that would be a vector parallel to the xy plane, one unit long, pointing in the direction from the z-axis to the point along that vector that would then be drawn from the, from the z-axis to the point in the rho direction. So one unit long, that becomes the unit vector in the rho direction. Notice we write it with an e sub rho, sometimes also written as rho with a hat on it. I actually prefer this way of writing it, but you see this a lot in textbooks. Then perpendicular to that, now, pointing in what direction? Well, it is perpendicular to the rho unit vector. We have what we call the phi unit vector, and we'll see in just a moment where that came from. But if you think about it in terms of this, let's say that we represent that point on a circular path that is parallel to the xy plane. Notice that at this particular point, and I didn't draw it very well, I guess I should have drawn a little bit better, but if I draw it like this, you can see that if we draw a line parallel or tangent from that point, tangent to that circle, we will have what we call a unit vector pointing in that direction. And it's perpendicular to the rho vector, and it's also parallel to the xy plane, and we call that unit vector in the phi direction. And then finally we have a third unit vector which is perpendicular to that, which is perpendicular to the xy plane in the z direction. We call that the z unit vector or e sub z unit vector. So how do we derive those unit vectors? How do we mathematically express those? Well, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to convert x, y, and z from Cartesian coordinates into cylindrical coordinates. And so you can see that this is a component of this particular triangle right here. Notice we have the angle phi, we have rho, the distance which is hypotenuse of this triangle, and notice the x component or the x side of this triangle is equal to the hypotenuse rho times the cosine of the angle phi. So therefore x becomes rho times the cosine of phi. The y distance here is opposite the angle phi, so we call that y equals rho times the sine of phi. Remember, rho is the hypotenuse of the triangle made by those three lines. And finally, the height z, of course, is equal to z, because in cylindrical coordinates, the vertical axis z is the same as it is in Cartesian coordinates. So therefore, if we now replace x and y by what those are equal to in terms of rho and phi, we can then replace the unit, not the unit, but the position vector r in terms of rho, phi, and z instead of x, y, and z. So instead of writing the position vector like this in Cartesian coordinates, we can write it like this in cylindrical coordinates. Now to try to find the unit vectors. First of all, we can define a vector in the direction of rho as being the change of the position vector with respect to rho. So if we take the position vector and we take the partial derivative of that with respect to rho, we will get this quantity right here, which is the vector pointing in the rho direction 
from the position vector when there's a change in the position vector relative to rho. In other words, it is the direction of the position vector in the direction rho. Then we take the partial derivative of the position vector with respect to phi, and that will be the direction of the position vector with respect to phi. It's not the unit vector, it's simply the component of the position vector in the direction phi. And then to find the component of the position vector in the z direction, we take the partial derivative of the position vector with respect to z, and we get k. So these are simply the components of the position vector in the direction of rho, in the direction of phi, and in the direction of z. Now, if we want to find the unit distance or the unit length of those vectors, we want to make sure that these are of unit length. Notice that if we square the cosine of phi and add it to the square of the sine of phi, this is always equal to 1. So the magnitude of this is equal to 1, which means that the unit position vector in the row direction is equal to this vector right here, which we define as the change of the position vector divided by uh, with respect to rho, which is equal to this quantity. So this now becomes the position unit vector in cylindrical coordinates in the direction of, 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 of rho. Then we want to find the unit vector in the direction of phi. Now notice that if we remove the rho here, we square this quantity and we square this quantity, add it together, we get 1, but it's 1 multiplied times rho. So to find the unit distance or the unit length of that vector, we have to divide this by rho to get the unit position vector in the phi direction. So that's what we're doing. To get the unit vector in the phi, in phi direction, we take this vector right here, divided by rho, which gives us this quantity right here. So this is the definition of the unit vector in the phi direction. And of course, the unit vector in the z direction is very straightforward. It's simply k. So now these here are the unit vectors in cylindrical coordinates in the rho, the phi, and the z direction. They're defined here, here, and here. Very different, of course, from i, j, and k, except for the z direction. So that gives us a nice little review of cylindrical coordinates, so we can use this information to figure out later on how to find the curl and how to find the divergence of vector fields in cylindrical coordinates. And that's how it's done.